It's another day, I've got myself another coffee, and in today's video we're going to be modelling out this stylized scooter. And if you're new around here, my name's Keelan, and if you'd like to learn something new, start a blender, follow along with me, and let's jump on into the video. Alright, we're back, and as always, I hope you've all been well, and I'm aware there's a lot more of you, and there always seems to be so many more of you every time I make a video. <laughs> but if you're new, my name's Keelan, and thanks for coming along, and thanks for hitting that subscribe button. I hope you enjoy today's video. But as promised, we are going to be converting this little default cube into a beautiful scooter today. So, with that, let's get into the first steps. Okay, so to start, let's press S to scale our cube down here, and then we're going to jump into right side view. Oh, and a couple of you have actually asked, how do you get up this little wheel to see the views? That's just the tilde key. That's the little key above tab. Okay, and press S and Z to scale this down to make this a little thinner. And I think I'll thin this out on the X axis too. And now then let's use S and Y to make it a bit wider. Um, I'm eyeballing all the measurements. I'm not looking for anything specific. I'm, you know, just sort of making this up as I go along in terms of uh, how big I'm going to make this. So feel free to play around and find something that's, you know, down to your preference. But then let's go ahead and tab into edit mode. And we're going to add a loop cut down here. So let's press Control R, left click to drag this up. And now we're going to build out the sort of front handlebars. So let's press 3 to select faces and then in right side view. I'm just going to press E to extrude this up to maybe I'll have them around about here. Something like that. And then let's press Control R. Left click, right click to leave that exactly in place. And then with this edge still selected, let's just press GY to add a slight curvature to this here something like that and of course we do need a seat so we're going to put the seat on the back end but let's just press ctrl r again left click and i'm going to bring this up towards the center axis here maybe around about there and then let's press three to select faces and in right side view again i'm just going to extrude this up to around about seat height and where would you be sitting on a scooter maybe maybe around about there I'm guessing here, I think that looks pretty good. I did look at a couple of reference images for this, but for the most part, I've just, you know, added my own spin on it because this is a stylized scooter and that's the whole point is to make it your own. So I think something like that is looking pretty good. So we've got the nice basis of our scooter right now. Uh, kind of looks like a snail, I know, but um, from here, let's jump on into our modifier tabs and we're gonna add the subdivision surface modifier. And now you can see this is taking a bit more of a nice scooter shape. So, and if you did want to keep this low poly, of course, just keep your viewport subdivisions at one. But I like to bring mine up to get that nice smooth look. So, you know, you can keep it low during the modeling process too, but just to make this nice and smooth uh, during the process, I'm just going to keep mine on three, just so I can see how this thing is going to turn out. Cool. But now let's add in some extra fine details on our scooter here. So initially, I'm going to tab in edit mode. Oh, oh, and before I forget, we should apply a quick scale and rotation. So in object mode, just press Control A and apply a rotation and scale. Cool. So then let's tab back in to edit mode, press 3 to select faces. And I'm just going to add in some extra detail at the front. So hold in shift, select these two faces. I to inset a little bit, maybe to around here. And then just press E to extrude this up. And this is just some sort of front bump for detail. And then another one we're going to do down the bottom here. So perhaps we'll go ahead and press 3 to select faces again. And hold an Alt. We're going to select this edge, which is going to select that entire loop. And then we're going to press Alt E to extrude faces along normals. And then just bring your mouse wheel up. You can hold Shift here as well to really slow down that movement. But when you've got something you like, just press click. Let's time into object mode. And I think that looks pretty good. Cool. And now this is going to be like a bit of a metal highlight that I'm going to be using as we go along. And But essentially, that's almost it for the chassis. We just need to add in some of these. I don't know what they're called, but in the reference images, like the old scooters had these like, like 
cool bump things on the side so that's what we're going to be adding in now and to do that let's press shift a well, i'm just going to add in a cube i'm going to scale this down with s let's go ahead and add a subdivision modifier to this to make it nice and round gx to bring this out and i'm going to jump into the right side view let's press g to move this into place and then let's just scale it out initially so s and y make it a bit wider s and z and i just want this to be a decent size maybe around there and then let's tab in edit mode Control r to add a loop cut and i'm going to add one in maybe around here and then press one to select vertexes and i'm going to select all four down here just so i can bring this up oh in fact i could probably just select the face so press three to select faces select this face and then in right side view press gz just to bring this up a little bit cool that's not looking too bad and i do want to flatten this slightly on this side so let's also add another loop cut so Control r and i'm just going to bring this over slightly to around here just to get a bit more of a flat edge on this side okay so now let's go ahead and tab in object mode you might want to scale this around a little bit but we'll see how this goes so initially let's just bring this in with g and x i'm not too sure if it's too large right now how do i feel about this hmm, let's scale this down ever so slightly and perhaps line it up so it looks pretty decent and then i'm also going to add a mirror modifier in my modifier list mirror it across the object here and i do like to pick my mirror modifier above all the rest perhaps increase my subdivisions just so i can see how this is going to turn out okay that's not looking too bad i also want to add a bit of extra indent around here so tab back into edit mode press 3 to select faces hold alt select this edge again to get that nice full loop and let's press alt e extrude face along normals and something around there i'm also going to press gz just to kind of eyeball line this up with the body i'm not going for anything perfect or exact here but i do want this to kind of line up with this so i'm also going to time and edit mode on this press three to select faces again and then hold in alt select this little angled edge here with alt which is going to select this the sort of top of the bevel out here and then gz to bring this up and i just want this to kind of align with this smooth part of the scooter so that when we do add some colors to this it's going to look like more or less one continual line all the way around cool but i think that's going to do it for the chassis let's just right click and shade smooth these and that's a good time for me to have a sip of the coffee I'm feeling good. This thing is coming along well, and I hope you're feeling good too, because, you know, it's a, it's a nice grey day in Wales, as usual. <laughs> but this is coming along well. You're doing a great job. Now, let's go ahead and add in the, the front sort of cover for the tyre, and we're just going to use a very similar technique as we just did with this section. So we're going to do Shift A, add in a cube, scale this down, GY to bring this forward, forward and subdivide this again with the subdivision surface modifier and then tab in the edit mode on this i'm going to do Control r to add a loop cut bring this down slightly to around here something like that and then right side view let's just scale this out in object mode just to get something a bit more thin and tire like so i'm just scaling on the x-axis here and perhaps we will inset this slightly too so in edit mode let's press 3 to select faces i'm going to select this face i to inset and then press e to extrude this upwards you may need to press z by the way to lock this to the z axis i found in blender 2.91 i think i'm in at the moment it tends to automatically lock it to the axis you sort of extruding on so right now it's automatically extruding on to the z-axis for me but i'm just going to extrude up slightly and then e to extrude up a little bit more and we don't need to go all the way in because we're not going to see this inner side i just wanted to create a bit, bit of an impression that this does go inwards 
cool. Right now, it's far too much like an upside down bucket, so we do need to shorten this out. So S and Z, and then S and Y maybe just to make this a bit more soft. I'm gonna increase my subdivisions. And let's also bring the rim out just like we've got with that one. So press three to select faces, hold alt on this edge, select this entire loop and alt E one more time to bring this out slightly here. Cool. And then I'm going to increase my viewport and subdivisions to three just to see how, how it's looking. Right click shade smooth and in my right side view, let's just rotate and sort of line this up where the tire is going to be on the finished product. Now, we're not going to be getting very far if we don't have any wheels to plod along with. So let's do Shift A and we're going to start by adding in a nice cylinder. That's a bit too big for what we're looking for here. So let's just do S to scale this down and then GY to bring this forward so I can see it a little bit better. And then RY90 to go ahead and rotate that the way we need it. And then S and X just to thin this down. We're going to start by adding a, in a nice loop cut down the center. So let's tab into edit mode, control R for the loop cut tool, and then left click or right click to keep this nicely centered. And then we're going to press Alt Z, which is going to tab us back into uh, X-ray mode. And then we're going to highlight all the vertexes on the one side and press X and vertex, uh, vertexes. So that's going to go ahead and delete the one side so that when we go ahead now and start adding in the detail on this side, being the rim and those little internal bits, it's going to automatically mirror onto the other side when we add that mirror modifier. So let's go ahead and start with the mirror modifier then. So here it is in by there. And what we're going to do is tab into edit mode on our tire here, press three to select faces. And then we're going to start by actually, oh, before I forget, in object mode, quickly apply a rotation and scale with control A, rotation and scale. And now you can see this is mirroring correctly. So back into edit mode. Let's start by pressing I to inset this. And this is going to be the tire section. So this can be as thick or as thin as you prefer. Then just E to inset to around here maybe. And then I'm going to press I to inset this again. This is going to be like the metallic rim uh, of the tire. And then press E to, in, uh, to extrude it inwards once again. And then press I to go ahead and inset this face and this is going to be where the sort of middle bolt section is and E to extrude this out and then it's up to you how much detail you'd really like to add but I'm just going to uh, press I to inset this one more time and then E to extrude this one more time and I to inset this one more time. And at this point, you've got like a nice low poly wheel, but I'm going to add in some extra bevels to create a nice smooth surface and could make this look a bit more stylized. So I'm going to press two to select edges and then pull, while holding alt, select this loop, press control B, and that's going to give us a nice bevel. You can scroll your mouse wheel up and down to control how much of a bevel you want. I'm going to add, what's that? One, two, three, just to get a nice smooth surface like that. And I'm also going to bevel this uh, little edge here a little bit. And perhaps we'll do the internal one slightly too. But I'm going to bring my uh, loops down to one, something like that. Okay, cool. Now we can right click and shade smooth this. And that's going to make it look like we've lost a whole bunch of details. So let's come into our object data properties here, turn on auto smooth. And that's going to make sure that we keep a lot of that detail. And I do like to go ahead then and add a subdivision surface modifier to this too, to really smooth that out. And I'm just going to bring my subdivision surface modifier up. And perhaps what would it look like when we have three? That is very smooth. We are losing a bit of detail on the rim. So this may be a situation where you want to come in and add some additional loop cuts to tell Blender to give this a bit more of a hard edge. So let's do that now. I'm going to tab into edit mode here. And I want this one just to be a bit more of a harsher edge. So I'm just going to press Control R here to add in a loop cut and bring it a bit closer to the edge. And perhaps do the same here, Control R, and bring it a bit closer to the edge. 
And that's telling Blender now that I want this to be a bit more of a harsher curve. I'm going to do one more inside this internal area. So tab and edit mode. X-ray mode is sometimes easier to see what we're doing. So I'm going to do control R here and just bring this up towards this edge. And just like that, the the sort of detail is a bit more prominent, but we are still getting that nice smoothed over appearance. Okay, so that's it for the tires. All that's left to do now is to go ahead and position these where you'd like them and scale them down. So initially, I just want this one kind of in line with our front section. You can see where this is clipping through. So it's a case of just playing around with your sizes on your different parts till you get something that you're sort of happy with. And then we're gonna go ahead and do Shift D, Y to lock this to the X axis, and bring this back for the other tire. You may or may not want to scale this one up slightly. Okay, so next up is just to add in the seat, which is gonna be very straightforward. It's simply gonna be a nice cube. So let's do Shift A and add in a cube, scale this down, and we're gonna keep this nice and basic. So I'm gonna add in a subdivision surface modifier like we've been doing so far. Scale this on the Y axis a little bit. And then tab into edit mode. And we're gonna add a nice loop cut down the center just to give us a bit more geometry. So control R and left click or right click to keep that nicely centered. Right now it's a bit fat. So, <laughs> so let's tab back in object mode. mode. And I'm gonna do S, Z to make this a bit thinner and then back into edit mode. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna press one to select vertices, Alt Z to go into vertex select mode. And I'm gonna select this side and just bring it down to give it a bit of a decline towards the front section here. And then bring this one back slightly. And I think I'm gonna bring the whole top down too. So selecting all of the top section, GZ just to make this a bit thinner. And perhaps bring the middle section up slightly. And I'm just gonna go and play with the shape slightly till we get this nice sort of gradient towards the back that gets a big bit chunkier. And I also wanna make it a little bit thinner in the front. So let's tab back into edit mode, press three to select faces, select this front face. And with the proportional editing tool, so click this up here to turn that on. I'm gonna scale this down slightly and you can scroll your mouse wheel in just to reduce the area of effectiveness. And I'm just gonna give it a slight gradient towards the front too, so that it gets a little bit thinner towards the front also. And you may want to bring this in slightly into our scooter. And then I'm gonna increase my subdivisions just so I can see how this is going to look. And I think something like that will do for the seat. So just right click and shade smooth this now when you're ready and we can progress on to the handlebars. Now to do the handlebars, we're just gonna simply add in a couple of cylinders to give us that sort of metal handlebar look. So to start, let's do shift right click up here just to move our 3D cursor to this point. And let's start by doing shift A and I'm gonna add in a cylinder. I'm gonna bring this right down till we get something a bit more the size I want. And then S Z to bring this up on the Z axis. And a quick tip is you can actually press S and shift Z to lock the Z axis here to adjust the thickness as you go along. And I'm gonna go into right side view because I want this to angle a little bit towards the driver. And perhaps also angle this out slightly here, something like that. Right click shade smooth. And that's gonna be one part of the handlebar. I do want to mirror this across too actually. So my mirror object is going to be the base. So that's the start of this here. And now let's add a nice central horizontal uh, section, which is gonna be where you grip onto. So let's do this by, I'm gonna duplicate this one cylinder we have already, so with Shift D, and then Alt R to reset that rotational axis. And what I'm gonna do is I want this nice and centered. Right now a 3D cursor isn't in the center, so I'm gonna select this part right here, which I already know is centered to the world. So let's do shift S cursor to selected. Now my cursor is nicely in the center. I also need to turn off my mirror modifier here. And with this cylinder selected, I'm quite simply gonna do shift S and do selection to cursor. And that's gonna make sure our, our cylinder comes nicely to the 3D cursor and it's centered perfectly in our world. 
All right, now then let's do GZ to bring this up. Uh, our 90 degrees into our right side view, and then let's line this up. We can also increase the scale slightly, and I'm gonna do S and X just to make this a little bit wider too. Something like that. Is that too wide? I'm not too sure. <laughs> Just I'm just eyeballing this as we've discussed, you know, you do what makes you happy at the end of the day And if you feel happy with it, then I'm sure it's looking great So from there, let's shift D to duplicate this Right click to leave in place G Z to bring this down and I'm going to create a bit of a smaller central bar and then as an X to bring this in Jump to our right side view again Just to centrally line this up and scale it down just so we have this sort of metal bar look going on. Cool. And now what we need to do is to put the sort of rubber grip sections on the here. So, okay, so I'm going to make this a bit bigger. And then tab in edit mode. Initially, I want a nice loop cut down the center, ready to mirror this across. So control R, left click, right click. And then let's add a, oh, I'll tell you what we can do. We can press three and then Alt to Z to go into X-ray mode. And we're gonna start by selecting this entire right side, Shift D to duplicate, right click to leave in place and press P selection, just to make this a separate piece. And leave it exactly where it is, because all we're gonna do at this point is to do S and X to shrink this down, G and X to bring this across till it sits around a bit on top, something like that. And you are gonna get this funny looking mesh. This is just Blender not having a clue which one you want to see because they are technically in the exact same place in space, which we do not want. So we're gonna press S to scale this up slightly and now we can see our rubber grip. Okay, so from here, let's tab into edit mode, control R to get our loop cut tool up again. And I'm just gonna put the one loop here and then pressing three to select faces, hold Alt, select this loop and Alt E, extrude faces along normals just to extrude this section up, just like that. Cool, and I wanna add some extra detail, so let's bevel this edge, um, and it's probably safe to do Control A and add in a rotation and scale. Tab in edit mode, press two to select edges, and we're gonna bevel this edge here. So just uh, hold Alt and select this edge, Control B to bevel, and I'm gonna add a couple of extra loops in, something like that. Okay, cool. Now we just need to mirror this across. And so let's add in a mirror modifier, mirror, and in our mirror object, make it the cylinder. And right now you're probably thinking, well, where is my grip? Well, the problem here is that we need to apply a rotation to our cylinder because right now it's not too sure which way is up. So let's do control A and apply a rotation and scale. And would you look at that? There it is, cracking. <laughs> Now we're losing some detail here again. You can, if you would like, also add a subdivision surface modifier to this. It is going to try smoothing this over. So let's add another loop cut in here, Control R, and bring this close to the edge just to keep that definition. Something like that. All right, it looks like we've only got one more part to do today, and that's to build out the little light that goes on the front. But um, before we do, let me just... I, I've decided to eat my banana mid tutorial. I, d I don't know why, but I just, I like to remind you guys to take breaks from the screen. I'm looking out my window now. Some beautiful trees out there. I'm eating my banana. And I, it, you know, just relish this moment. You're doing, you're doing amazing. You know, you're doing this. Now let's finish this up. Add in a nice pretty light on the front and add in some color before we see how this thing has turned out. So let's resume. Where we what we were doing so let's go ahead and do shift a i'm just adding a cylinder i'm going to scale this down bring this up and then scale this down on the z axis with s and z bring this out with g and y and we can model this out quite big first so let's go ahead and apply a rotation and scale with Control a tab into edit mode press three to select faces and i'm going to start by doing e to extrude this up S to, whoop, make sure you turn off your proportional editing tool. S to scale this up. E to extrude again. And then I to inset. And then E to extrude this up. 
and then our with this face selected we're quite simply going to do Control b to bevel this and you want to add a couple of extra loop cuts in here to make this nice and smooth looking and then we can do Control. Uh, i mean right click shade smooth come into our object data properties and make sure you turn on auto smooth and normals and now this is going to be a, a nice a basic light we can go ahead and rotate this scale it down to a good size and then stick it on the front of our scooter to make sure that we have a nice light that we can go ahead and see with just like that how easy was that right now you are you're pretty much there i can see my wheel isn't quite right so i'm going to make this a bit bigger and this a bit bigger too but we are pretty much there in terms of the model da, 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 da. Okay, so at this point, all we need to do is to bring a little color into our world. So in order to see color, if you're new to Blender, you need to come up to here and jump into the material preview window. And in your drop down, you've got a couple of, you can click on, on this here. This is going to give us a couple of HDRIs to work with while we add some color. I like this one. This adds a nice little two-tone effect while, while we work here. But in order to add color, all we need to do is to click on our, well, any part really, and in our little circle down here, this is the material properties, click new, and then you can name your material. I'm just going to call this base, and then just go into your base color here. We've got a nice color picker, and I'm going to go for like a reddish color. And then you can adjust the roughness to make it really shiny or really rough. I'm going to go for like 0.65 something like that and then when you click on another object and you want to use that material you jump into your drop down and click on that color but i did say i want to include some metal highlights too so i'm going to press forward slash just to isolate this section briefly and let's tab into edit mode and i'm going to press the plus arrow here and create another new texture that i'm just going to call metal and we want to use that at certain parts here. Initially, for me, I want this like bar area at the bottom. So I'm going to press 3 to select faces and then hold Alt and select this entire loop. And I think I'm going to do the same here. I'm going to hold Alt, Shift, select this loop also. And then with this metal selected here, click Assign. And that's going to make sure that only that section is currently featuring this material. And now let's make it look like metal. So let's scroll down here so you'll notice this metallic meter very convenient we just turn this bad boy up and now he does look a little bit more metallic you can't really tell too much but if i turn my roughness down you get more of that shiny appearance and i'm also going to lean my base color ever so slightly into the blue to give us more of a silvery color just like that now if i press forward slash that's going to bring everything back and we can do the same over here too forward slash to isolate this section tab into edit mode and i already had it selected there but just to go through it one more time we're going to hold alt and shift select this one keep holding alt and shift select this one and then click the plus to create a new texture uh, we want our metal that's currently in our drop down metal and click assign and then forward slash to bring everything back just like that we've got the materials coming along and you can do the exact same thing all throughout so if i for example wanted the handlebars to be metal let's go into a drop down metal and metal and metal just like that and to finish this up i'm gonna leave you a little challenge i want you now to go ahead and apply the rest of the materials yourself but don't worry, you can do this, I promise you. And if you ever get stuck, just come back and watch some of these sections again. And let's see how this thing turned out. All right, and here is mine all finished and colored. Great job! And that's gonna just about do it for today's tutorial. But as always, I hope you enjoyed. And if you are interested in an extended version of this tutorial, where I go a bit more in depth on how to set up your render, your lighting, and add in some extra additional details, that will be over on my Patreon very shortly. But on that note, my name is Keelan. I hope you enjoyed the rest of your day, and I'll catch you in the next one.